From Hollywood, the George Burns and Gracie Allen Show for Hormel and Spam. George and Gracie. Spam, whoa boy. Spam, what joy. George Burns and Gracie Allen are the show when it's orchestra. The singing glee with the smoothies three. Last but not least, and who is Bud Heaston? <laughs> It's Monday night, the 13th. <laughs> but there's uh, really nothing unlucky about it because Burns and Allen bring you plenty of fun to your house. And say, ladies, if you want to have good luck with tomorrow night's dinner, serve baked Spam. There's a delicious main course, easy to fix. Spam is tender, taste-tempting meat that comes in a can. All you have to do is open the can, take out the Spam, score and stud with cloves, and place in a shallow baking dish. Put it in the oven and baste with a little pineapple juice or a delicious sauce, which is described for you on the Spam can label. In just a few minutes, you'll set before your family a piping hot surprise full of downright goodness and flavor. Extra goodness, ladies, because Spam is a perfect combination of sweet, juicy pork shoulder meat and tender ham. Have a Spam bake tomorrow. Just remember to say to your food dealer, I want Spam. <laughs> And here they are, like Spam, cold or hot, they hit the spot, George and Gracie. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Gracie, say hello. Oh, hello. Well, Gracie, if you happen to read my name on the society page one of these days, don't be surprised. Well, uh... What'd you say, George? I say, if you happen to meet my, read my name on the society page one of these days, don't be surprised. Oh, no, I won't be. Hmm. Well, there's no reason it why you shouldn't right be right there all the time, but well, you Well, I didn't say it, George. <laughs> you know, it's very hard to see when you're looking up. Yes. You have to look down. Yes. You know, George, only yesterday I was saying to my sister, Bessie, what has Cornelius Vanderbilt got that George hasn't got? He's got position, he's got friends, he's got money, he's got culture. Me? No, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Oh. But my sister Bessie says I still think he's a lowbrow. Cornelius Vanderbilt? No, you. <laughs> so your sister Bessie doesn't think I can get into society? Oh, huh? well, don't worry about it, George. Everybody I told this conversation to said she's crazy. Your sister Bessie? No, me. <laughs> well, anyway, Gracie, the reason I said that you would see my name on the society page was because last night I went well, out you with you did? A... Well, last night yeah. I went to the Palladium Ballroom where Artie Shaw is working. Yes. And as I came in, the band was playing Jeannie with the Light Gray Hair. So I checked my Just coat. A minute. And Jeannie with the Light Gray Hair? Yes, so I checked my coat. Gracie, and then it's when... Jeannie with the Light Brown Hair. Yeah, I know, but she turned gray from overwork. <laughs> So, let's see, where was it? Maybe from playing around too much. Yeah. Oh, yes. So, I checked my coat, and when I got to the dance floor, the head waiter said, follow me, miss, and I did, and he was a beautiful dancer. Uh, anyway, after... The, uh, <laughs> the, uh, the head waiter? No, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Look. So... Gracie, I started out to tell you, last night I was with a very famous society girl. Oh, yeah. And is she mad at Artie Shaw? The society girl. No, the bubble dancer who works at the Palladium. <laughs> There's a, there's a bubble dancer at the Palladium? Yeah, and every time Artie plays her number, he fills his clarinet with buckshot. <laughs> with, uh, with buckshot? Yeah, and that way he plays fantasy and pops the bubbles at the same time. Pops the bubbles at the same time? Yeah. Boy, oh boy, oh boy, I wish I were there last night. Why, Bud, I'm surprised at you. <laughs> I can't help it, George. I'm just crazy about frenzy. 
This, uh, this Bud is really a musical genius. He is. Say, uh, did you know that Bud plays all the popular songs with one hand? Well, what does he do with the other hand? Drops in the nickels. <laughs> anyway, last night I was out with this society girl. Oh, who cares? <laughs> As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted, and if it happens again, a certain guy is going to get fired. Last night, I was yeah? out with... Yeah? Look, it might interest you to know that there's a certain clarinet player that you can't bully because he doesn't have to take that kind of talk. Who? You? No, Benny Goodman. <laughs> Very funny, Artie. A big scream. Artie, that's a fine thing to say to George after the hundreds of nice things he's done for you. Hundreds of nice things? What's he ever done? Yeah, George, name one. <laughs> name one? How about the time? Yeah, Artie, how about that time? What time? Yeah, George, what time? When I first found him. What was he? Yeah, Artie, uh, what are you going to say to that? Nothing. Well, that may be true. But, uh, George, you've got a lot of nerve saying Artie was nothing. I said Artie was nothing? Oh, please, George, once is enough. Wait a minute, who does George think he is? Yeah, George, who do you think you are? This is stupid. Please, Artie, you can't say George is stupid. What? Well, he is stupid. You're nothing. Yeah, you're nothing. You're nothing. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, please, yeah, please, you're nothing. Boy, nothing please. Here. What's the argument about? Well, he said I was nothing. He said I was nothing. Oh, aren't you two boys ashamed of yourselves arguing over nothing? Come what? on, boy. <laughs> Shake hands and make up. Well, against my will. All right, Ollie. I guess it was my fault. Yeah, well, it's against my will, too. Mm. And it was my fault, I guess. After all, you have done a lot of nice things. You have done a lot of nice things for me, anyway. Name one. Yeah, name one. Oh, quiet! <laughs> this has gone too far. You people are just jealous because I'm stepping into society. Yes, George, I think it's great, wonderful, marvelous, delightful. Society? No, spam. <laughs> Look, will you stop? This girl is coming up here tonight, and I'm trying to tell you Pero that de it's very no that... no well, now it's the guitar player. Senor Lee, why are you butting in? Uh, Senor Burns, uh, this society girl, this debutante... <laughs> debutante? See. Si. Is she pretty like that movie star Catherine Hartburn? Hartburn? It's Hepburn. Hartburn. Hepburn. Do you know the Philadelphia story? Is it clean? <laughs> what an ignoramus. I'll bet he can't even spell his own name. I can't so spell my own name. Well, let me hear you do it. What? From memory? <laughs> Gracie, I don't think that was so funny. Well, neither do I. <laughs> well, what are you laughing at? Well, my brother Willie's letter. <laughs> He's the one who's been drafted, you know. Oh, yes, he just joined the army, <laughs> Willie. Yeah, well, here's the letter. Dear Mother, Dad, Gracie, and Mr. Favisham. Who is Mr. Favisham? Well, that's the mailman. He always reads the letters first. <laughs> Well, that stands to reason. Um, thanks very much for the birthday turkey you sent me. My tent mates and I lit the 21 candles, and we really had a wonderful time. Yesterday I was on 21 the... 21 candles on, on the turkey? Yeah. Yesterday I was on the... Your, your brother is 21 years old? No, the turkey. Oh, the, 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 the turkey, uh... Yesterday I was on the top... So he say... put 21 lit candles on the turkey? No, under the turkey. Lighted the candles under the turkey? Yeah. Well, how else could he cook it? Well, I never thought of that. I see what you mean. Yesterday, I was on the target range with a group... W George, what letter is this? An A or a V? Looks more like an R. No, no, it couldn't be R. His R's look like G's. What about his eyes? They're very weak. That's why his R's look like I G's. I see. Yes. <laughs> oh, well... No. His O's look like M. His O's look quiet. Uh, he, was, he was on the target range, oh, yeah. remember? Yesterday, I was on the target range with a group of rookies, and I shot for three hours. I would have shot longer, but I ran out of rookies. <laughs> Your brother ought to get a medal for a thing like that. Oh, he did, but not just for that. Mm. He's also the only tank in the regiment who doesn't need armor. That's a nice kid. He probably parts his hair with a score with a with a corkscrew. Yeah, well, so my brother. <laughs> I was going to say corkscrew. Yeah, yeah. 
I should have said it. Yeah. Got a big laugh. Well, say it. Say it. <laughs> you anyway. see, you don't have to write for me. No, I, I just make a mistake, and what a while, what a while. <laughs> well, anyway, more letters. Yes. Thanks for the picture of Daddy you sent me to wear next to my heart. I had a little difficulty at first, but now I slip the picture inside of my woolen underwear and then climb in with it. <laughs> it's he a... climbs in with it? Yes. It's a full-length picture. I see what you mean, yes. Even so, I had to cut the feet off the picture, as Daddy is five inches taller than I am, and I look silly being that far off the ground. (laughs) Signed, Willie. That's the finish of the letter. Yes. Good. P.S. I've got three marvelous tent mates, but one thing seems to be lacking. We haven't got a tent. Well, I've heard everything. Well, that's plenty, great. Now this morning, Dad's Charlie and Little was saying there'll be some changes made, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised if Senor Lee would chime in. For there's a change in the weather, there's a change in the sea. From now on, there'll be a change in me. My walk will be different by talking my name. Nothing about me, honey, is gonna be the same. I'm gonna change my way of living, honey, if that ain't enough. Then I'll change the way I strut my stuff Cause nobody wants you when you're rolling gray There'll be some changes made today Honey, there'll be some changes made today For there's a change in el clima There's a change in el mar También cambiamos nuestro modo de amar Y si tú lo quieres, me cambio también Buenas noches, cucaracha Murió do and ha cha cha Yo lo que yo te digo, no te quiero mentir Voy a cambiar mi modo de vivir Entonces es cuando tú me vas a amar Y yo lo sé muy bien My darling sweetheart ¿Por qué me voy a cambiar? For there's a change in the fashion And there's a change in the shoes There's a new way people get the blues I must make changes from old to new I must do things the way the others do I'm gonna change my tomorrow I'll make my changes today Cause I must have lots of loving Ooh, I gotta have it or I'll fade away Just hold your horses, love, a boy is on his way There'll be some changes made Oh, there's a change in the weather, there's a change in the sea From now on there'll be a change in me My walk will be different, my talk and my name There'll be some changes made, changes made today Oh, dame mi sombrero ya, y tocame el rancho grande Smoothies and Sanya Lee, that number was Tres Tres Chick. That's, that's French for in the groove. But none of you people would know that because you don't mingle with society, you see. All right, poor man's Charlie Knickerbocker. Who are we out with? Doris Duke or Barbara Hutton? Happens to be Cabina Wright Jr. Cabina Wright Jr.? That's right. Well, pull my tooth and call me Duchess. <laughs> Well, wise guy, she's coming up here tonight, and I'm taking her out right after the broadcast. Say, George, if you want to make an impression, rent a butler and have the butler Gracie, come in. Gracie, and... hire a butler. Rent a butler, did you say? Yeah. Gracie, hire. George, if you want to make an impression, rent a butler and have Gracie, come in. Gracie, hire. George, if you want to make an impression, rent a butler. I'm sorry, that's my if I can go. Mm, no, no, look, Gracie. It... <laughs> you misunderstand me, and I pretty near killed the whole thing altogether. <clears throat> Look, Gracie, people rent furniture, they rent cars, and they rent apartments, but they hire butlers. Well, that's Hollywood. They haven't got a dime, but they've all got butlers. Mm. <laughs> Gracie, this whole thing was your idea. Yeah, but I bet if I thought of it, you'd say it was silly. <laughs> all right, when Cabina Wright gets here, I'll rent the butler. Hire. 
When ca- Oh, quiet, quiet. Anyway, to impress her, have the butler announce your name in Russian. In Russian? Yeah, you'll be a much bigger name that way. <laughs> well, I've had enough. I've had enough? Oh, that's pretty, but personally, I like Rachmaninoff. Look, Gracie, when she gets here, will you try and conceal your absurdity? Oh, is that thing showing again? Yeah, it's a little bit on the bias. It's showing just a little uh, bit. Senor Burns, if you want to make an impression on her, why don't you buy a racehorse like Saw Biscuit? Saw Biscuit? Si. You mean Sea Biscuit? Saw. Sea. Saw. Sea. Saw. Sea. Let me off. I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Senor Lee, this goes for you, Gracie, and everybody else here. Tonight, I don't want any wisecracks. Oh, leave it to me, George. Now, listen. Uh, as soon as she comes in, I'll say, ladies and gentlemen, have you tried Spam? Spam? <laughs> spam? Yeah. Now, uh, what's your it's language? It's Spam. Well, I say, what's That's your language? That's when the line comes yeah, in. Yeah, okay. Now, uh, it's, uh, what's this now? It's unadulterated porcine clavicle with harm meat added. I like that. Oh, well, that's fine. That's oh, yeah. very now, good. Just... Frigid or torrid, it strikes a responsive corrid. Good and ritzy, huh? That'll Jackson? help a whole lot. But society people don't talk that way. They have charm. They have culture. They're natural. Why, they hardly open their mouths when they speak. As a matter of fact, bud, a big mouth shows lack of breathing. Isn't that right, Gracie? Oh, don't ask me. I wouldn't know. I don't <laughs> do that. Okay, okay. <laughs> Anyway, Cabina Wright ought to be here any minute, and, and you'll really love her. She's a swell girl. But what I'm nervous about is right after the program, I've got to meet her uncle, and gee, I, I, I hope I make a good impression. Mr. Burns. Yes, what is it, four years at Harvard? If you'll allow a sound man, perhaps I can be of service. Well, let's hear it. Having majored in psychology at Harvard, I feel qualified to advise you on the art of making friends. Well, thanks. It's all a matter of striking a note of common interest. I think you've got something. For instance... If her uncle happens to be a philatelist, talk about stamps. Yes. If he happens to be an Epicurean, discuss foods. Mm -hmm. If he happens to be a fraternity brother, give him the fraternal handshake. It might even make it easier if you knew what college he went to. Well, he's, uh, he's a Yale man. Give him a hot foot. <laughs> well, thanks for your help, sound man. When Cabina gets here, I wish I could think of a novel way to impress her, but I can't. I can. Of course, I could have the boys give her a fanfare. Well, of course, if my uncle were here, he and I could do something together, know, but yes. he isn't here, so I guess I'll I have know, to do something by myself she again. She comes in, we can roll out my a uncle. carpet. You know, he's the one who sees with his thumb. No, that, my uncle. that wouldn't You know, do. that George, my uncle sees with his thumb. It would be a, a lot good of people idea, don't though, believe that. He sees with his thumb, but he does. In, I'll just if my uncle wouldn't believe it. Say, if he Hello, hadn't Kabina. seen it with his own thumb. How was things? You see, my thumb, nice day my today. uncle, with his thumb, he would, sees uh, with his thumb, my uncle. Would, uh, sees, sees. With my... With his thumb. Yeah, my uncle. Your uncle. Yeah. Your uncle sees with his thumb? Yeah, he sees if his soup is hot. He sees if the soup is hot. Well, uh, <laughs> now, Artie Shaw, his clarinet and orchestra put some original touches to the old spiritual, Nobody Knows the Trouble I've Seen.
Say, say, Bud, do you think I'd better call Emily Post? I've got about a thousand questions to ask her. Oh, no, you don't have to ask Emily Post. Ask any woman, George. If you ask women the right way, you can get the right answer without any trouble. You can, Bud? Oh, that's right. I'll show you how. Now, watch. Uh, watch, George, now. Uh, ladies, here in the audience, do you want to know how to give your family a swell taste surprise? Yes, Say, Bud, I think you got something. Thanks, hey, George. <laughs> now, look, we'll go on for uh, some more here now. And do you want to serve something that's easy to fix? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Now, it's all done with Spam. S-P-A-M. There's no mystery about it. Spam has become the most popular new meat item brought out in a generation. Originated by Hormel, Spam is delicious meat packed in a handy can. It has dozens of uses and a flavor all its own because Spam is different, isn't it? (laughs) Well, folks, Spam is sweet, juicy pork shoulder meat combined with tender, tasty ham. Nothing else but those two choice cuts. That's the reason Spam has extra flavor, extra downright lip-smacking goodness. That's why Spam, served cold as it comes from the can, makes a perfect lunch. Why sizzling hot slices of Spam fried for breakfast make your mouth water for more, and why Spam baked for dinner in all its meaty flavor completely satisfies. But get the real thing, ladies. Insist on Spam. Try those easy recipes on the label. Ladies, get Spam when you shop tomorrow. Are we all agreed? Slice it, dice it, fry it, bake it, cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. Say, George, if Cobina doesn't show up, I know a beautiful society girl that'll go out with you. You do? Yeah, but first you better call up Gladstone 1131 and see if I'm there. <laughs> You're a society girl? Oh, sure. It takes four maids to help me with my milk shower. Your, uh, your milk shower? Oh, well, sure. You take milk showers? Every day. What's the four maids for? To hold the cow over the tub. <laughs> Look, uh, Gracie, you don't have to worry. Yes, yes, yes. Yes? Who are you? I'm left over from the commercial. <laughs> Well, everything happens to me, everything. Oh, here she is now. Don't forget, everybody, on your toes. Come in. Well, it's Cabina Wright, Jr. <laughs> well, how, how are you, Cabina? I'm, uh, I'm so glad to see you. Fine, George, and I'm very glad to see you. Well, look, George, she talks with her mouth open. You tell me society girls only talk like this. Quiet, oh, quiet. <laughs> Gracie... This is Cabina Wright. Now, George, don't forget Junior. No, I want to meet him, too. <laughs> and, uh, Cabina, this is Artie Shaw, our musical director. How do you do? Miss Wright, this is a pleasure. The charm of your presence exceeds even the flattering reports that preceded you. Boy, am I corny. <laughs> you can say that again, brother. Mm. <laughs> uh, Cabina, you'll have to forgive Mr. Shaw. You see, as the saying goes, he's, he's a little bit off the cob. Oh, look who's talking. <laughs> oh, she's got a wonderful sense of humor. Say, Cabina, I thought you lived in New York. Well, I do. You see, my being here is purely an accident. Well, so is mine. My mother expected a boy. <laughs> Gracie, careful. You see, Gracie, I can't stay still. I've got wanderlust. Oh, that must be awful. Is it anything like the measles? <laughs> Uh, No, no, Gracie. Wonderlust means moving from place to place. Oh, that's the measles, all right. You know, my my brother got them in Texas, and the next day they were south of the border. Gracie, Cabina means she traveled. Oh, like my uncle. Well, for instance, he winters in Palm Beach and summers in Newport. Really? And where does he fall? On his face. And how's your uncle? Uh, Cabina, don't you think we ought to go? (coughs) Oh, oh, yes. Uh, Bud, uh, this is Cabina Wright, Jr. Cabina Wright, Jr.? Well, gee, Miss Wright, I've seen your picture in all the papers and magazines. Why, thanks, Bud. And there's one thing I'd like to ask you. What's that, Bud? Do you really wash your things in Lux? (laughs) Why, Bud! Yes, Bud, and I eat Spam, and I love it. Well, uh, uh, Cabina... Uh, I just don't know what to say. Uh, oh, don't apologize for anything, George. This is the most fun I've had in months. I'm so tired of going out with all these well-groomed, good-looking society men. 
who spends so much money on you, who have such good education and fine manners, and it's a pleasure to be with you. <laughs> Why, Cabina? Oh, please, Cabina, you're turning George's head. Uh, and if, uh, if you turn it anymore, he'll have to stand behind his back to shave himself. <laughs> uh, you follow me, George? Yes, I follow you. Well, you better stop or I'll call the cops. All right, I've stopped. <laughs> George, what I said may not have sounded right, but what I meant was, I like a man I can make something of, a man I can mold. Well, then, George, is your man because you'll find him very moldy, and Never I always say... Never mind. Never mind. I wish you'd be quiet. This girl means something to me. Well, come on, Cabina. Hey, Senor Burns. What is it, Senor Lee? I would like to go out with that Carbona. <laughs> Carbona? See, si. she's really from society. She's a member of the 300. 400. Three and a quarter. 400. 350. 400. I'll take her, but you drive a hard bargain. <laughs> well, come on, Cabina, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. Cabina, is this on the level? After going out with fellows like the Vanderbilts, how can you go out with George? Now, listen here, Mr. Shaw. What has Cornelius Vanderbilt got that George hasn't got? Hmm. He's got wit, he's got charm, he's good company. And what's more, I'm definitely going out with him tonight. George? No, Cornelius Vanderbilt. Good night. Well, Otto, you fixed it. That was a lot of wise cracks. Yeah, with all those wise cracks. Yes, all those silly things. Yeah. And Gracie, don't you start again and don't help me with all this talk. Yeah, Artie, we've I've had enough for you. For years. Artie, you've got now a lot of nerve. There's fellows something. like you that make fellows like you. Quiet! 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 Join us next week, same time, same station, for another Burns and Allen show with Artie Shaw and his orchestra and the smoothies. This is Bud Heaston speaking for Hormel and Spam, reminding you to remember that cold or hot, Spam hits the spot. Have you tried Hormel Chili Con Carne? Even those who think they don't like chili do like Chili Con Carne the way Hormel makes it because it's different and everybody likes it. Double your money back if you don't like it. Try Hormel Chili Con Carne tomorrow. This is the National Broadcasting Company. <laughs>